Up next, online TV. We have Jacob Shoei with a story debating whether or not being an online student is beneficial. Then we have Landon Marino covering sports, including the girls' championship soccer game this weekend. And me, Ashley Coker, here with your weather. All that and more, Lion TV starts now. Good morning, Cersei High School. I'm Josh DeGroat. And I'm Avery Simpson. Let's get right into the last announcements of the year. Cersei High School is excited to add several new computer science classes for the 2021-2022 school year. Courses we will offer include cybersecurity, mobile app development, programming, robotics, and video game development. Class size is limited, so submit your request to join one of these classes as soon as possible. For more information about these classes or to learn how to join, visit the school's website, the Guidance Center, or Mr. McGar's classroom at 311. Baseball tryouts for students entering 9th or 12th grades will be held next week on May 24th and 25th from 3.30 to 5 p.m. at the high school field. Students will need to bring a glove and have a current physical. Any student wishing to run cross country next school year, please email Coach Carroll. Incoming 10th or 12th grade boys that are interested in playing basketball, tryouts are held May 21st at 2 to 3.30 in the Searcy High Annex Gym. Wear a t-shirt, athletic shorts, and basketball or tennis shoes. Yesterday, Cersei High had a groundbreaking ceremony for a new arena gym. This project has been in the planning stage for the past couple of years. The gym will be located on the west side of the campus. The district estimates the project will be complete in 2023. Students and teachers gathered to remember Jesse James, who was lost as a freshman four years ago. They gathered shortly before Friday night's graduation ceremony to light candles, listen to Jesse's favorite music, and to remember his life. This would have been the year Jesse would have walked across the stage as a graduate. An inspector who failed to discover a crack in the Interstate 40 bridge linking Arkansas and Tennessee had been fired. He reportedly discovered a crack in 2019 but never informed anyone of the safety hazard. Traffic on the six-lane bridge was shut down last Tuesday after inspectors found a significant fracture in one of the two 900-foot horizontal steel beams that are critical for the bridge's integrity. River traffic under the span was closed Tuesday but reopened on Friday. The closure has impacted a heavily used corridor and raised concerns about the shipping and delivery costs. The Arkansas Trucking Association on Friday estimated the closure would cost the trucking industry at least $2.4 million a day. Traffic has been rerouted to Interstate 55 and the 71-year-old Memphis and Arkansas Bridge, about three miles south. President Joe Biden is putting the spotlight Tuesday on the electric vehicle future he envisions for the United States as a way to tackle climate change and create jobs. Biden is touring Ford's Electric Vehicle Center, a new factory being built on the grounds of the automaker's massive road complex in Dearborn, Michigan. The president was visiting a day before Ford is expected to release details of an all-electric version of its F-150 pickup truck called the Lightning. Biden has proposed a $2.3 trillion infrastructure plan that aims to help transform the automotive sector by making vehicles that don't burn gasoline more mainstream. He also sees a shift toward electric vehicles as a major part of his plan to fight climate change. Speaking of climate change, let's see if it'll be warming up here in Searcy this week. Take it away, Ashley. Good morning, Searcy High School. I'm Ashley Coker here with your weather updates. So today, your high will be 83 with a 19% chance of rain. The winds will be headed southeast at 11 miles per hour. Then humidity is at 67% and your sun will rise at 5.59 a.m. on to tonight. Tonight, your low will be 63 with the rain at 23% chance. The winds are headed southeast at 7 miles per hour. The humidity is at 82% and your sun will set at 8.08 p.m. onto the Almanac. So for the last seven days, the highest temperature has been 84 with a low of 44. The monthly average of precipitation is 5.52 inches and the month to date is 5.51 inches onto tonight. Friday, it's going to be a high of 85 and a low of 24. Saturday, it's going to be partly cloudy with a 19% chance of rain. Sunday, it's going to be a high of 87 and a low of 64. Monday, it's going to be sunny with a 13% chance of rain. And Tuesday, it's going to be a high of 85 and a low of 62 with a 24% chance of rain. 
Looks like it's going to be a pretty good week, Cersei. Back to the news desk. Thanks, Ashley. Now let's see what's for lunch. For lunch, we'll be having crispy dough, cheese dip, Mexican rice, pinto beans, salad, banana, milk variety, brownie, and grapes. Be sure to thank our wonderful lunch ladies for all the hard work that goes into preparing our delicious lunches. I sure will. Now we're going to send things over to Jacob Shoei for a story on virtual students. The coronavirus has dictated our lives since late March of last year and it still continues to decide things for us. One of the challenges COVID has created is virtual school, but is it really a challenge? We asked two students from both sides for their opinions. I think being in person and virtual is about the same. I don't think one is harder than the other. Personally, I do just as well being a virtual student as I did being an in-person student. Due to the growing parental concern, virtual school was created to decrease the risk of contracting the coronavirus. The idea behind it was good because there are some people with, with health issues and stuff that could get affected by COVID. You know, the pandemic scares a lot of people and a lot of people are still aren't comfortable going out in public. So I think it's a good thing to have an option, you know, for virtual school. There has been many debates over whether going virtual is worth missing the school experience. Being online is definitely worth it. You definitely get a lot more time on your um, assignments than you would in in-person. I think teachers are a lot more lenient when it comes to online schoolwork. But many teachers are concerned that online students are relying on cheating and not truly understanding what's being taught. I feel like a majority of these students aren't putting in the maximum effort, I guess you could say, that they could. Having hands-on learning and be being able to like have assistance or help next to them is really beneficial and can help kids that are struggling rather than using cheating as your source or online. With online school taking control of the school system as an option, schools have realized the many benefits of having a virtual option for their students. It's highly possible that many schools will continue to provide students with that option, even after the pandemic is over. Back to the news desk. Thanks, Jacob. That was so enlightening. Great job. Now let's jump into the world of sports with Landon Marino. Good morning, Cersei. I'm Landon Marino here with your sport updates. Esports, Preston Showered played first and won a set of three shocked the opponents in game two. But unfortunately, Joel Mansur and Gavin Smith lost their set. They were playing the number one team in the state. The boys soccer team lost against Benton Panthers with a score of one to two. The girls soccer team is still in the hunt for the championship with two playoff wins against Solemn Springs with a score of one to zero and Little Rock Christian and that score was 2-0. Our Lady Lions will play for State Friday at the Benton Athletic Complex versus Lakeside. We caught up with Chandler Meadows to see how they are getting ready for State. We practice a lot, pretty intense practices um, where we scrimmage against each other um, when we work on finishing so we can make sure and actually score goals during games um, and we watch a lot of film on other teams. Cheer them on Friday. If they win, they would have completed a perfect season with no else. In national sports, the Chicago White Sox were blowing out the Minnesota Twins in the ninth inning, up 15 to four. They brought in William Ostrado to pitch to save the bullpen. Lori Locust has dreamed of working for the NFL team. She's an inspiration for nearly 40 women who have whose heads nodded and faces beamed during the FaceTime. With the Tampa, Tampa Bay Buccaneers assistant defense line coach last Wednesday. That's all I have for you today. Now back to the news desk. Thanks for those sports updates, Landon. Well, that wraps up our final show of the year. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Cersei High Line TV. And to follow us on Twitter at Line TV, Instagram at Cersei Line TV, and on Facebook at Cersei High Line TV. Signing off, I'm Josh DeGroat. And I'm Avery Simpson. Have a great summer break.